Well, hello there everyone. I'm UXW Bill, and even though it's tired and I'm late, I figure I can manage to squirt out one more video tonight before I head off to bed. Especially as it happens that I've got a video exporting downstairs in the computer mess room right now, and for some reason known but to the gods of computing and Serif Movie Plus developers, has been taking an obscenely long time to complete, at least today. Normally I can get a high definition video squirted out in about 30 minutes after I've finished all my editing, but for some reason today it's just been taking hours upon hours to get them exported and I haven't even begun to look into why. So what are we going to do in this video? Well, we're going to revisit the CyberPower Sine Wave Battery Backup product review. Not because there's anything wrong with it, not because it has any kind of a deficiency, but rather because a commenter on the video review where I talked about this unit in depth asked a very good question, a test that I had intended to run myself but decided to leave out at the last moment about what this uninterruptible power supply's surge capacity would be. And I, of course, am very curious about that, so what the heck? We're going to answer that question and just see what ends up happening here. We'll try starting a few devices, all highly inductive motor loads, probably all of them hermetic refrigeration comp compressors, just because that's what I actually happen to have handy. And there's one right here. This is a trash-picked Kenmore freezer. There's a video about this if you want to watch it. So this thing's been plugged in. Should be all charged up. We're going to unplug it, which you can see me do right now. So you'll know that there is no duplicity here, no dishonesty, nothing like that. We'll cold start this unit, which it is capable of doing. You can see that it's come to life there. It's definitely running on the battery. It indicates as much right now. And in order to do a cold start test, well not a cold start test, but a surge current test, we're just going to take the AC power plug from this chest freezer, which is amazingly up here where I can actually get to it, we're going to plug this thing in and see if it can actually start. And I will tell you right now, folks, a number of inexpensive inverters, in fact, every inexpensive inverter I've tried, up to a 750 watt steady state, 1500 watt surge rating, has failed this test. Just will not do it reliably. So let's see if this UPS can pass it. I'll make sure I've plugged into the right outlets here. And I apologize for all the cricket noise. I hate crickets. I haven't bug bombed the garage yet. I may never. But listen carefully and we'll find out whether or not this thing will actually start. And you'll probably also see it in this thing's load meter. And it did start it. You can hear it running right now. It's pulling down that battery pretty fast though. Which brings to mind another question that someone had asked. Could you extend the runtime of this true sine wave UPS and operate a load like this for an extended period of time? I would very seriously doubt it. Even if you beefed up the cooling, you'd probably have to battle problems with overheating. Let's plug it in and see how it handles the transition back to the AC power line. It did so flawlessly. Of course, many of these things operate the inverter in synchronization with the power line frequency, although obviously that's not directly possible when you start up from cold, but the microcontroller oftentimes takes a little bit of time to get everything synced up gradually before it transitions back to the AC power line. We'll have to let the battery recover from that little onslaught. Actually, you know what? Let's not. Let's just take it over to the next victim or patient right now and see what actually happens. See if it'll start a little dorm fridge on the amount of battery capacity that it has right now. It's barely had any time to charge itself up, so let's go see what happens. I'll start out with the second portion of this video by begging your forgiveness for the utterly abysmal lighting conditions. They're the best I have to work with in this particular situation, and if the video turns out at all, I hope you can forgive me for its rather dark nature. It'll still convey the most important points, especially if you're actually listening to the sound. What you're looking at right now is a fairly late model dorm refrigerator. Got a little tiny compressor in it. 
but size isn't always the indicator of everything that it seems to be at first glance. I will tell you right now, inverters actually had a harder time starting this thing than they did the chest freezer we just tried over there. I got a few of the cheap inverters to start that chest freezer every so often. Not a one of them would start this thing. They'd all try and they'd fail. So we'll see how the cyber power holds up, especially since it's had no battery charging. Now this is one of these things that's got flammable refrigerant in it. That doesn't actually factor into this because it's very unlikely we're going to explode or blow anything up. The danger of that is very, very remote. I just mentioned that because these are a relatively new thing here in the United States, but our friends across the pond, such as they may be, have actually had them for a while now. This uses isobutane, or R600A. Another popular flammable refrigerant is R290, which is actually propane. But there's so little of it used in these things that I think the risk is very minimal. So here again, the test is simple. We turn the UPS on, let it cold start. Ignore the battery capacity graph. I promise that very little time has elapsed between then and now. This thing's thermostat is clicked. That's why I left the door open. And we'll just go ahead and, and plug it in and see what happens. Started right up. Just like a dream. And in fact, it appears, if that estimate is anything like correct, which I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock in it personally, but it looks to me, at least in theory, like you could hold a little fridge for this for about an hour or thereabouts. So I'd say that counts as a pass. Let's try something else. How mean do you think I should be to this poor thing? I don't want to burn it up. Even though it's under warranty, and I'm sure CyberPower would hand me a new one unless they saw this video, I'm wondering, should I try some box fans? Or should I try to start this big old 15 cubic foot behemoth of a signature chest freezer. If I do decide to try this one, and I'm kind of on the fence about it, I will let this thing go ahead and charge its batteries up. All right, folks, if you know me at all, you'll know I'm kind of a fraidy cat. I don't like it when high power electronics blow up, and I think there could be some risk of that taking place here. But I'm ready to make the test with the final contestant, at least in terms of refrigeration appliances. I have the signature chest freezer sitting here. You can see I'm in the same place I was. I've actually zoomed in on the scope meter, whose battery is almost dead. I hope it'll get through this, so that we can take a look at the characteristics of the output waveform when this UPS comes under load. It'll be interesting to see if it clips or drops significantly in level. But I'll have to make my test very, very quick. Because like I say, I'm basically out of battery power on the scope meter at this point. See there, it shut off on me already. So we'll have to do this quickly. Alright, we are presently inverting. We'll turn this on. And see the waveform. Let's go. Okay, it complained bitterly of an overload, and I'm sure you saw how wiggly that waveform got before this thing cut out on low battery. The starting relay on this thing has chattered ever since I got it, so don't put too much stock in that. But the darn thing did start it. <laughs> and I've got to admit, I did not honestly expect that it would pass that test. Let's go ahead and return to utility power now. Again, not a hitch. Just switches right over beautifully. Everything's working. I don't smell any smoke. Well, let's try a few other things around here in the garage and see what we can come up with. And for what I think will probably be the final test, unless I can dream something else up, these are two members of my box fan collection. They're a little shabby looking, but you can't kill an old box fan. They just run forever and ever and ever. Here we have one on the left that uh, the nameplate has long since fallen off on it. I know there's a video about this. I think it's an Eskimo fan, but I really don't remember for sure. The other one on the right is definitely an Eskimo fan. Two-speed motor. Runs very well despite its appearance. One was rescued from a thrift store. The other one, I think, actually came out of somebody's trash and yeah they're not pretty 
but they do very well for garage grade fans. The switches are on on both of them. They're set to start up on their high speed. Let's just see if this UPS can do it. Nothing to it. Spin up might have been a little slower than usual. But they're both running just beautifully and smoothly like you'd expect if they were truly getting a nice clean sine wave alternating current in. Alright, I think it's safe to say that this CyberPower uninterruptible power supply, although I certainly wish there were a few other features that it had, just little nitpicky things like two direction voltage boost and cut. As it is right now, it can only boost low line voltage. But with a few minor reservations, this thing seems like it's great. It didn't fail to start anything that I threw at it tonight. And when I said I was actually going to let it charge its battery somewhat before I tried to start that signature chest freezer, it only had about five minutes, and then I grew tired of waiting. And I said, what the heck, we're going to go hard or go home, we'll see what it does. So everything you saw it start tonight, it started on the charge that it happened to have in its batteries whenever it was last plugged in. So, thank you as always for watching. I certainly do appreciate it. Looking forward to hear your constructive commentary down in the comments area below if you have something to say.